I think we're recording. Yes. Welcome back to the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host Amy from Pandentra. Welcome to another Fountain Pen collection update. In this video, I'm going to update you on some recently arrived fountain pens from repairs, some of the fountain pens that are leaving the collection, and some new inks that I recently added towards my very, very numerous fountain pen inks collection. This is my happy time. This is the time that I'm staying in front of the camera, sharing my passion, my beautiful things, my collection of writing instruments, and I am walking this journey together with you. And this is why it's so, so rewarding at this end of the week to spend some time with you all. So I hope you find this content interesting, captivating. And if you find something of value, don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up because this will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Let's see, from last time, I updated everyone on some recently arriving fountain pens and uh, I just added my Bohemian Twilight to my personal fountain pen collection from last video. Very interesting fountain pen. I did change the nib size on it. I went with an extra fine, although it's such a big fountain pen. I do find the extra fine point being very, very practical. I do have a lot of nibs to choose from. So I put an extra fine nib just to make it more practical in daily use. And I've enjoyed this fountain pen a lot. We do still have some of them for sale available on the Penventure website. And there you can pick in between a lot of trim colors. And also because we have multiple fountain pens for each trim color, you can pick in between different color schemes because some of the font pens are more blue, more brown, and you have access towards uh, picking such a unique color that you may uh, want to have in your personal font pen collection. Possibly this font pen will uh, be on the way to your favorite fountain pen reviewer and uh, her name starts with in pens, continues with T. Carrie. Yeah, uh, maybe we will send this fun pen to her to just see what she thinks about it, uh, how Leonardo improved on the new transition in between uh, the barrel and the cap and uh, the, the writing point, uh, how it's feeling, uh, the extra fine point of this fountain pen and all of the things that are characteristic towards this fountain pen. So uh, I'm gonna make a big parcel and uh, send her some of the fun pens that I want her to enjoy and to share them with her audience as well. So this was from uh, the last video, Pelican M1000, beautiful fountain pen. This medium point nib, it's beginning to catch on me. And um, this is uh, another rabbit hole that I hope to explore soon in much more details uh, because I did receive a pen case with a very, very sweet M1000 and uh, I cannot wait to share it with you all is this beauty right here. This is the Urushi Maki A version and uh, it's, 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 wow, it's, it's amazing. I cannot wait to share this uh, beautiful fountain pen with you all on the channel. This is not mine. I do have the more simple version, the white ray one with the Rodden, a limited edition of 400 fountain pens for the white ray on this Maki A, I believe is 120. So it's a much more limited edition in itself. So it's going to be very interesting to put this two fountain pens head to head and to see them uh, in proper details on our channel. Hmm. Let's see what I've been missing. Well, uh, I did some inking. I did took some of the fountain pens that I haven't inked up for quite some time. So I am enjoying again my classic pants LB5 with this gorgeous, gorgeous nib, uh, this uh, cross point Nagahara nib. And uh, it's been like a joyride with a Sharpie. So it lays down plenty of ink. I did put some ink in my Danny Trio and this is the short Genkai version. I have not inked up for, I believe, half a year. So having some free and spare time from actually collecting fountain pens, made me to just go through some of my pen cases and bring up uh, some of the font pens that I haven't used lately. And among them, we can name these two fountain pens. Uh, those are the Visconti Opera Master Crimson Tide and Crystal. Both have palladium dream touch nibs uh, on the crystal. I do have a double broad nib, which is um, 
so so missed right now from Visconti in my collection the Palladium Dream Touch nibs and on the Crimson Tide I have a 23 karat Palladium two-tone medium point. I have to say that uh, when they um, decided to give up on Palladium as a material for the nibs Visconti was like wow it's so good that we're finally gonna get gold nibs and all of that but if I check my email I at least get like three or four emails uh, every week asking about if I still have in stock a Palladium 23 karat Dream Touch nib. When those nibs write, it's just like, hmm, like, I don't know, it's like butter. It's like writing on smooth glass. It's such a exquisite writing experience. Anyway, uh, let's see what came back from uh, some minor repairs and I'm gonna explain a little bit regarding this fountain pen, the story behind it and all of that. But before going there, take a look uh, around. This is the new layout of the studio. I did uh, change a few aspects regarding the lighting and I hope it's crystal clear and everything looks good and you enjoy this, uh, let's say, non-conformistic um, layout. And I hope uh, I'm gonna get your uh, suggestions in the comment section down below if you like this. I'm gonna leave the fountain pens that are gonna be uh, exiting the collection at the final of the video because there is a very important nugget of um, information there. You may want to catch on uh, this fountain pen because it's quite a special one that's gonna leave my personal fountain pen collection. And the fountain pen that recently arrived from some minor repairs, it's my Omas Paragon Arco. This fountain pen is one of those fountain pens that I consider to be a once in a lifetime score, in my opinion. I got it from um, Letizia Jacopini from Italy, and she was wonderful. The whole process was top notch, and I got the history lesson with this fountain pen. I got the fountain pen together with the box, with the ink, with everything from Omas in Arco, bronze celluloid, probably the most sought after material from Omas. And uh, I did a video review for this fountain pen. You can check it up here. And besides uh, having this fountain pen, it came with a few things that I wasn't considering as being top notch condition to say so, although it looks beautiful, works beautiful. I did had a few, uh, let's just say, thoughts that inside of the fountain pen, something was not working properly. And uh, by that, I mean that the piston was very, very slow to move. It needed a lot of pressure to move the rod of the piston filling mechanism down, although the fountain pen wasn't leaking or anything. And besides that, there was a space right here at the section in between the sterling silver section and the barrel. It was like one millimeter gap. And I thought that was because of the material that was curing and shrinking uh, in all of this time. But uh, the fact that we got this fountain pen on a repairing table and someone took it apart and seen the internals, uh, well, we found out what was happening with that gap. And uh, I'm gonna show you. I sent this fountain pen to a very special person who has knowledge in repairing fountain pens. I'm not gonna name that person right here. He took on the quest of opening this fountain pen and to service it and he took on a very special challenge because there are no more parts. So if something goes wrong, if you crack a small part like the piston cap or any part of the fountain pen, that's it. Uh, you can say goodbye. So imagine the stress of me sending a fountain pen that was riding perfect, was enjoying it and all of that to be repaired. I wanted to do this process because later, maybe one, two, three, five, ten 10 years from now, there will be no one available to do this kind of service. There'll be no more parts and it's gonna be uh, by uh, the time much more harder to do such a process. So uh, I did have a fountain pen as a donor just in case something was going wrong, but it was in resin, fully functional and all of that, the same model, the same everything, but I kept that one in my personal fountain pen collection just in case. Nevertheless, uh, the special person, the special friend of mine opened the fountain pen and found that the inner sleeve of the piston filling mechanism was cracked. And I do have it right here. So this is what was going on inside there. 
uh, of the of the pan and it was broken the founder pan wasn't leaking or anything but a lot of pressure was required to actually fill the fountain pan with ink and uh, he actually had to sacrifice one of his paragons in order to have a sleeve like this to be installed in my fountain pen. For that gesture, I am very grateful and thankful to have such a friend. Everything works now and the fact that that specific part that I showed you was broken, the gap was slightly uh, larger than usual and right now with the new part installed everything fits very nice and actually all of the pattern is now aligning. The cap with the barrel was aligning in the past but the piston knob right here wasn't aligning and right now I'm going to show you everything looks gorgeous. Every part is aligning and the fountain pen looks like a million bucks. So I'm super, super happy to have such a friend who actually helped me to service this fountain pen because this is one of those fountain pens that if someone asks you, in this case, if it's asking me, Amy, if you're stranded on an island and you can only pick up one of your fountain pens, which one will it be? Well, actually this Although I'm not sure, I wanna say it's number one, it's in top two or top three that I will consider to take with me on that stranded island with a lot of ink because, uh, yeah, and paper, of course, because why not? What what I do with a fountain pen without ink and paper? Anyway, uh, that's it. Now, I'm gonna show you some of the inks that I recently acquired in my personal ink collection because I do collect inks as well and uh, primarily, uh, those inks are from companies that m also make fountain pens, but uh, there are some special things regarding each of them. And I do hope that the camera will pick uh, these beautiful colors and how they are in uh, real life. And uh, I'm gonna do some swabbing, some ink swabbings, because why not? And I think fountain pen ink is very underrated in regards of what I usually post on my YouTube channel, on the Penventure YouTube channel and uh, let's give it the proper welcoming into our collection, this following inks. Gotta love that sound. This is the sound of Tommy River paper. And I got here my Hobonichi notebook. This is where I doodle, this is where I check on fountain pens and the nibs and how they write and all of that. And I'm gonna use this incredible paper just to show you some of the ink that I recently got. And we're gonna start with the Leonardo Taurashi, and uh, this is how it's looking. It's a very, very peculiar color. It's not brown, it's not red, it's very hardly in between those. And I'm gonna show you how it's writing. And uh, let's see which fountain pen I have it inked up in. And this is uh, Leonardo Taurashi, red wine. I'm going to show you a swab of this ink and let's give it a go. So it's a very, very beautiful color. It's underrated. It's just like red beans, um, wine, but it's very, very interesting. And I love that this ink, it's heavily, heavily shading. So there is no sheen. There is nothing uh, going on in regards of that, but it's always, always shading. So this is uh, ink that I consider to be a little bit dry, something to use in a very wet fountain pen. Let's move further because I do have another beautiful ink right here. So this is the Sailor Manio ink and this is Kikyo, blue black. I just told you, I have too many blue black inks. And the thing about Manio inks is actually that I love how they behave. I love that they are cleaning up very, very, easy, uh, beautiful presentation, this very quality glass bottle and everything. And the ink looks stunning, plenty of ink, 50 milliliters, the bottle, it's quite large and you can fit very large nibs, size eight nibs and anything and everything. But the actual beauty of this ink is the fact that it has a particular smell, which is something that I attribute to my um, school years, it's dried chalk, or at least this is how I 
uh, envision that smell. And we have sailor, manio, kick, yo. And uh, I have it inked up in another Japanese fountain pen, my Nakaya Dosofin V2 Kuro Tamenuri. And now I'm gonna show you the beauty of such a ink. And I'm gonna give you a swab of it. Oh my God, I just love blue black inks. And this one is amazing. There is a little bit of a sheen uh, going on, reddish sheen, copperish, red but again this is such such a rainbow uh, moment right now in regards of inks i do love uh, to just simply show off my inks although many of them are black and blue i find always reasons why to just get another blue black ink there is something different in regards of having each and every one of them Anyway, moving further, two new um, Van Gogh inks. Uh, this is the Starry Night. Hmm, purplish. Hmm, I like it. Let's see. I don't have it um, inked up in any of my fountain pads, but we're gonna check right now a swab of this purplish blue. Hmm, look at that. Mm, mm, mm. And you are seeing right here the sheen of the Manio Kikyo. And uh, the next thing from the Van Gogh series is Whitfield with Crows. Again, a blue, but this is uh, something a little bit more teal-like. Hmm, I like it. It's more uh, darker turquoise-ish color. And uh, let's see which is the fountain pen that's going to leave my personal fountain pen collection. Well, I told you that I had a uh, donor fountain pen ready for my Paragon. And actually that is the fountain pen that's going to be available on the consignment section. It's a Paragon made in black resin in a very beautiful condition. All trim elements are plated in rhodium. The section looks beautiful. There is no huge scratch marks around here. The nib is 18 karat, broad, very, very sweet and gorgeous nib. In writing, the piston moves very, very easy. And this was there just in case I needed some parts for my Arco Paragon. I had this fountain pen prior to getting the Arco. The Arco made its way uh, when it was available from Letizia Copini. And uh, this is going to be available on the consignment section. I'm gonna leave you a link down below. You can go there and check the fountain pen and you can make it yours. It doesn't have to be always Arco bronze because it's like three times the price of this one, but it is the same pen. You can get uh, a piece of Omas with this Paragon and you can get the same writing experience like with any Paragon, just like it. In regards of my collection, right now things have been going a little bit more slow and uh, this is uh, the, the sort of a time that I am gathering more and more information and I am waiting for a huge, huge purchase and a huge important collection update. And it's in works. I cannot tell too many things regarding it, but probably uh, it will be shared in this format soon with you all. I look forward to uh, seeing some of you that are attending the Dutch Pan Show soon on June the 4th, roughly around a month from now on. Drop by our table, say hi, and I'll be more than happy to meet all of you in person. Uh, this is the, the sort of a, a collection update that uh, I just need it right now to just simply stay in front of the camera and talk with you all and update you. Uh, things have been going good. We are happy to report that all of the orders from uh, the Labor Day weekend sales have been shipped and uh, we are happy to know that everything arrived on your way uh, and everything was in order. 
Uh, I'm gonna update the list down below. You can scroll down a little bit. You can find there the complete list of my personal fountain pen collection, all of the fountain pens that I own at this very moment. And also, if you are looking for an extra writing instrument, scroll down, you will find the details for the PenVenture website. Thank you so much for staying this long with me on the PenVenture YouTube channel. Don't forget to support the growth of the PenVenture YouTube channel. Hit the thumbs up. This will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. If you're not subscribed, click there, subscribe, and you will be notified whenever we have new content. Speaking about content, if you want to continue watching my videos i'm gonna leave you this right here you can click and enjoy as always i'm your host amy from penventure i look forward to seeing you next video take care stay safe bye bye